Hello, welcome back. Well, I'm trying some new things here. Uh, I thought maybe, I know it's so hard to read the blackboard. I'll, I'll get all of this solved eventually, but I thought maybe there's too much white. So I, I put some, uh, some cloth here to see if that would have an effect. I'm changing the light a little bit. I'll eventually get it down, I'm sure. Uh, all right, so that was about that. Too much white, maybe. Uh, this is the 20th day first video. There will be <coughs> two today. Uh, right, I, I said on the video from uh, the, on the train, or about the train, I think I said I had never seen uh, uh, grains, irrigated grain crops. Well, uh, I forgot, rice, I, I've, I've, that was uh, term, or what do you say, pivotal in my life, actually, when I saw the irrigated rice paddies in Senegal. I lived in Africa for one summer in the, uh, work, uh, training for the Peace Corps. And uh, the beauty of those irrigated uh, rice paddies uh, affected me. And, and so, yes, I had seen that. I just had not seen grain, I mean wheat or barley, uh, that had been irrigated. Not in person. Uh, not, certainly not gravity irrigated. Uh, now, uh, re extreme recycling. And I had a very interesting and long conversation with Shirley. Uh, whom by now you should know who, who this is. She's teaching this course, she's making this course with me. I'm doing the live part, but she's always there. And uh, this extreme recycling, uh, that touches a, a, a sore spot in, in a way, and I understand why. Uh, because Americans are probably the worst, well, not probably, I dare say Americans are the most wasteful people on earth, uh, and uh, probably the least into recycling. And I'm an American, and uh, we there is so much that we could recycle that we don't. Uh, uh, and we talked about that. I I know. Uh, and and the the whole business of of the beast and and here I was burning wood. Uh, why? Uh, and uh, the, the you know the the neighbor's barn, recycling, kilocalories as currency. These are all related. Uh, so are bisses. Uh, so are the trades. Uh, and uh, it occurred to me, and and uh, it, it makes me think. I I've got a live one there with this extreme recycling. And uh, I know, as Shirley pointed out to me, many of my viewers are not Americans. They, they live in, say, Germany. Well, I'm preaching to the choir. That, that's an expression in English, preaching to the choir, where the choir is always there at, at a church. Uh, and so the preacher, uh, the, he doesn't need, in a way, to preach to the choir. Well, we'll see. Uh, I, th I think what I'm ready to, I'm ready to even take that one on with the most recycling country in the world, which may be Germany. Uh, uh, when we get to uh, kilocalories as currency, that, that's going to be quite a subject, I think. And, and I said, some of this is revolutionary. Uh, and I'll stand by that. I think it's revolutionary. I, I noticed that my pants have a patch on them. Uh, and I thought, should I change them? I thought, well, no, no, of course not. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. This is recycling, in a way. And, and I, I think about the fact that fashion, you know, when I taught uh, middle school, you know, the middle school kids were so into fashion, especially the girls. And I don't know if it's still the case, but they would buy brand new clothing with holes in them. Uh, and yet, I don't think they would dream of wearing clothing with patches. Uh, it, it is such a, a, a different... It, it's a revolution waiting to happen, is, is what I'm saying. So I will come back to that. But uh, we're, uh, my subject is, is really today is Santiago de Compostela. We got there, Eric and I got there, uh, it was in the evening, and there we were met by a man named Chaussé. Uh, Chaussé, we had never met him before. Uh, my, uh, he, was a, he is a good friend of my niece, and she is the one, Sarah, and she is the one who got us in touch. And his hospitality was unbelievable. He, he met us at the train station, he took us to his home, he fed us, he gave us a lovely place to stay, uh, and then the next day took us into Santiago de Compostela. Uh, he's, a, he's a university professor, 
Uh, and I'll probably tell you, well, I'll say more about him. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, that was our first impression of Santiago de Compostela. Chaussée's extreme hospitality. Something that uh, in, in, in some parts of the world, most parts of the world, is, is almost sacred to be hospitable. And boy, was he ever hospitable. Well, when uh, you look at the next video, uh, 20.2, now you're going to see uh, clips, view, uh, things I saw as I walked around Santiago de Compostela. For some of you, it may be the most boring uh, stuff you ever saw. It's possible. Uh, my purpose was not really to entertain, uh, but uh, you're going to see that I filmed so much stone. I filmed so much paving. Uh, these are details. These are details of Frank's Tour d'Europe. Uh, and uh, there, there's going to be two more uh, videos like that. I, I filmed so much of this as I walked around Santiago de Compostela that, uh, that I realized I, I really need to break this into three parts. So, I don't know. <laughs> Just have to see what you think. But I would urge you to use pause if, if you're watching these. Very often, I have a habit of moving the camera too fast. I know that. Uh, and on the train. I couldn't affect that on the train. But if you just click pause, it, it, it will normally go right into focus, and you can see you can see carefully, almost better maybe, than if I stopped the camera and held it still. Just use the pause button. Well, good luck with that. Uh, there's more to come, uh, but, uh, but that's... Uh, if, if you go on with this, you're going to spend part of a morning wandering around uh, the streets of Santiago de Compostela. All right, uh, see you next time.